Okay, well here we go. I thought I'd do another video on interesting bikes I've found on Facebook. Now this is a 1985 XJ900. It says 50,000 Ks, but I don't think that'd be correct. I don't, I don't think they'd have a clue what it's done. This looks like it's been a few different project bikes. They look absolutely awesome. Um, I think that I'd like to have a go at finishing this one. I mean, look at those wheels. It's just, I looked at the tank and I looked at the wheels and I thought someone's done a lot of work to this. But then I went and had a check on what it was like originally and yeah, if you have a look, the tank's there, the wheels are there. I mean, this is a, it was a nice looking bike to start with. I think it'll make a great little custom. And running down the specs then, uh, 98 horsepower, so nearly 100 horsepower from way back when. I just think this is a, an awesome place to start. Uh, yeah, $1,500, the bike's running. It will need a bit of work there. But, you know, it's not even that heavy, 242 kilos. I mean, it's the same weight as my BMW was. So, and this thing's got a quarter as much power again. So, yeah, no, I, I actually would have liked to have had a go at this one myself. But, unfortunately, it sold rather quickly. And, yeah, before I could get it, was it like 100 kilometers from my place. So, I didn't really have a chance to get up there and get to it before it was sold. Uh, which is a darn shame because, yeah, I think I would have liked it. Now, something that I don't particularly like is when people take these old K-bikes and make monstrosities like this out of them. I mean, what have you actually done here? you painted the wheels black, you put a stupid seat on it, you've taken the arse end of it off. What have you got here? Pride and joy up for sale. Modifications include right-hand kick stand. Common modification, removing the center stand to stop oil draining into heads. Look, I had my K75 for 15 years. I've been on a lot of forums. Never, ever have I seen or heard of that before. It's simply not a thing. Anodized black stainless steel fuel cap with new OEM gasket. Wow. Cafe racer style headlight. Rear frame mini chop still legal. I'll take their word for it. Custom leather seat. Comfortable AF. Now, as I said, I had a BMW, and let me tell you that we've ridden a lot of bikes, my wife and I, and the BMW K75 seat was just simply the comfortablest thing that we've ever had. And there was no issue with it. You could go on, we'd go on three, four, five, six hour rides. That thing was just lovely, and that bike was 10 years old when I bought it. And the seat did deteriorate over the next 15 years, and I was thinking about having it redone um, when it got to 25 years old, but as it turned out, I had to get a different sort of bike, but... I can assure you that that bike would be uncomfortable AF. Now, there's nothing actually wrong with this next one, the good old Kawasaki KLR 650. It's probably not even a bad price at $5,500 for a 216 model. But where did the camouflage get lost in translation? I mean, what is this, the Minecraft edition? That's not camouflage, that's a GIF or a thumbnail blown up to full size and printed in poor graphics. I mean, really, how could you actually look at that and think that that paintwork is doing anything for this? I mean, this thing's got a lot of stuff done to it, you know? But that paint, my gosh, it's just... I don't know. I don't know how you could look at that and think, yep, I want to look like something that's coming from a nine-year-old's Minecraft game. So here we have something that's a little more out there. We've got a couple of Suzuki GT Rex. Now, you might be asking yourself, $4,000 for these, but they're two strokes, you know, and the GTs probably aren't as famous as the, the TZ750s or the Kawasaki Widowmakers or even the, the RG Gammas, but these are still two-stroke 750s. I mean, these things are going to go like stink. They're as rare as proverbial hen's teeth. So, yeah, I mean, if you had had something that you were doing up or if you needed parts for project, this is probably a really, really good deal. So, yeah, it's not for me. It's too much work for me, but we might have a look at some other fixer-uppers as well, eh? So here we have a little KTM 390. So what's he got? Motor and it dropped a rod, seized up, have a spare engine to go with it. Has a Yossi full system, exhaust worth over $1,200. So, 
yeah, upgraded to a 40 tooth true sprocket. And it's a little bit like he says he's got an engine to go with it. So does that mean he can just change the engine? It mightn't be such a big job then. I mean, for a KDM 390, that's probably a good deal, $1,500. We'll just have a bit of a look and we'll see uh, what they're worth complete. Okay, well, there's a 214 for just on $4,000. Uh, 4250 for a slightly newer model. 4500 for another 2014. What else have we got? 5000 for a 2015. Well, you know, I kind of think that if you got the, uh, if you got it with the engine and you could change it yourself, the $1,500 is probably not a bad price. I mean, I haven't gone into these bikes to see if they're registered or not, but most of them should be for that sort of price. So, yeah, if you're handy with the spanners, like if I was looking for something and the black tar meant the engine worked, I'd certainly have a look at doing that. I reckon that'd be a pretty good deal. So, what have we got here? Oh, this is the Hyasung GT. She's got a little bit of trouble as well. I'm no longer riding and have a few difficulties. Bike has a slow coolant leak. Does not start unless it's push started. I believe may need a start. A few scratches on the fairings. If those two things are fixed, it rides well. Has an aftermarket exhaust with the mod plate. Doesn't come regular or roadworthy. Look, I did a bit of research on this one because once again, um, that's a nice looking bike and fairly recent for that money. But these things are just a myriad of problems. Um, so many issues like this. But what I saw that really I, I don't think it's worth putting the money into. I think it's just going to be a money pit. What do we have here? Oh, the lovely Honda ST. This is just another one of those. Yeah, man, it's a great bike, but what do you do with it? Uh, $1,800. Uh, it's got 86,600 Ks on it. Not a not a scratch on that motor. You know, this thing will do two, 300,000 Ks without thinking about it. Um, but, yeah, what do you do with the bike? It's 26 years old. It's, it's a great lump of a bike for $1,800. You know, it's a lot of value for money, but are you going to tour it as much as I would be happy to? Are you really going to trust a second-hand 26-year-old motorcycle to do the sort of kilometers these are made for? It's just, it's a gamble. I'd probably take it if I was looking for something like that. And this here, this is just a nice bike. I remember when these were new. I remember going to see um, at the 2008 Big Boys Toys and they had the 1600 Mean Street there. It was $20,200 brand new. Um, and this is just a great thing. It's got a few things on it that I can see need fixing. There's not really a lot of information about it. He doesn't say seized or anything. But once again, for $3,000, it's a big lump of a bike. It's got 94,000 Ks on it, but it's a big engine. It'll just keep chugging along. Uh, and here's another bit like the Honda. This is an ER6N. These are just a great little bike that are nothing special but are always good. Except that bike is not starting now. I've been told it's probably just spark plugs. Don't have time in the moving side without roadworthy because the exhaust is too loud. It will be easy for the bike to get the roadworthy. Our rear tyre has a puncture. Yeah, oh, look at that exhaust. Good Lord, who does that to a bike? That is just ridiculous. It's got... Surely that's been shortened from something else. That's just... Yeah, why would you even think that that was going to be any good? That's hopeless. Oh, and here we have a little CBR that's had a bit of a... bit of a run-in with another vehicle, I'd say. Um, it says he has a video of the bike starting and running. Goes through all the gears. But doesn't have the key. So, it's holding the radiator. Look, if you just needed an engine, this would be an absolutely great way to get an engine for a buggy, like he says, or for another bike, if you had another bike that needed an engine. And, yeah, or if you just wanted to figure out how things come apart and go back together. What have we got now? Oh, yes, so here's a little... <coughs> the uh, Yamaha V-Star 650 Custom. Custom by Smoke Garage Brisbane. One of one handled title Bioshock. So, I mean, the things with this is you've just got to decide if if you really like it, if you like the way it looks, um, 
is it worth the premium price over just buying a standard one and maybe doing a little bit of work to yourself? So, once you got $13,000 on it, um, you know, it is a nice thing. I mean, I'm not, there's a bit of a list there of what's done on it. I'm not a big fan of those fat wheels. They, they look good, but I know from riding that they don't ride well. So, yeah, as I say, the key is just to figure out whether or not you think that it's worth the premium price over just going and buying one. So we'll have a bit of a quick look and see what they're worth. It's about the same, $9,000. Uh, Ten and a half. Nine thousand again. Ten five. God, they've got a horrible boat tail on them, don't they? What a horrible looking rear end. So you know, it comes down to that. I mean, for me, I, I think that. Well, it's a toss up. I mean, I would like to spend the extra money on the one from the smoke garage. I think it's only four thousand dollars, but then it does represent sort of half of what the cost of a normal one is so you're paying one and a half times what you'd pay for a normal one but then they're, they're not really to my style whereas the smoke garage one is i suppose if you actually like the v-star you probably wouldn't like the smoke garage one and here's a strange little gl200 imported one of a kind bike in australia well i've done a bit of research on this and yeah i think you might be right these seem to be some korean or thai delivered bike that didn't actually come to Australia. I mean, you can see it quite looks like a CD, um, CD90 or something like that, <clears throat> as it would have been delivered in Australia, probably in the 60s. This is probably just one of those local models that were made locally from old parts. And But yeah, it's a nice little thing. It's always tough when you're talking about these older bikes that have been fully restored. You know, it takes a lot of work to get them into that condition. I think they're looking for something like three or $4,000 for this one. You sort of got to pit it against the new Grom. Oh, two and a half. You've got to pit it against the new Grom and see what you think. Here's a couple of bikes I, I really don't understand. I just put them in here. I'm hoping someone in the comments might tell me a little bit more about them. The Street 500s. I didn't really get into this whole thing. I thought it would be a good idea, but then they seem to have been universally panned. No one seems to have a good word to say about them. Although, apart from a couple of owners I've talked to who said they were great. So I don't know whether it's just a, you know, a, a Harley Harley got to be a big Harley thing, sort of the way everyone pans the, the sportsters, because all Harley riders think everyone should ride Harleys, but they shouldn't really be riding any Harley. Yeah, look, it's all a bit confusing, but anyway, I, I and I can't believe anyone's done that to the rear end of that bike. I mean, who thinks that looks good? That's just crap. I do prefer this second one, all except for that seat guard combo. And here we have an 89 R80 GS. Now these pull unbelievable money, as you saw, 13.8, I think it was. Um, I actually had a friend of these with a, a K100 GS that was quite old. And he said he wanted to sell it and buy one that was a few years old. And I said, well, your 80s model is worth the same price as a four-year-old one. And he sold it for $5,000 and he rung me and he said, I put that bike up for $5,000 and it sold immediately. And I said, well, yes, because it was worth twelve. All right, just something a little bit out of the ordinary. I know we've been doing bikes here, but just for a change at the end here, I thought I'd do this VK sedan. Now, this is probably 84, 85. This is a, a Holden Commodore, Australian model. It's got the 304 Chevy in it, stroke the 355. It's had a bit of work done. Um, big extractors, no power steering or aircon, two speed power glide, uh, nine inch rear dick, so a bit of work done, but then no power steering or aircon, so a bit hard to drive, more of an off road car than a, than a road car. I mean, these things are appreciating value, it's a bit hard to tell what's going to be worth money and what's not, so. You make your mind up what you'd throw your money at, what you think's a money pit, or what you'd just like to see burn. Let me know in the comments. Thank you.